Okay, so in this part, they want us to find the x-intercept. We've been talking about the y-intercept and the slope-intercept form and finding the y-intercept, but now we're trying to find the x-intercept. So whenever you want to find an x-intercept for a function, you set the function equal to 0. So say your function is, you know, 2x plus 3. I think we had something like that a minute ago. You're going to set 2x plus 3 equal to 0, and then that'll tell you the x-intercept, okay? Um, and this is going to be true for other functions as well. So when we go to chapter 3 and we do more work, you'll still be able to use that idea. Okay, so they give us a linear function, and they want us to find the x-intercept. So we take 1 half x minus 3 and set it equal to 0. Now we're going to solve that. So 1 half x equals 3, multiply both sides by 2, and so we get x equals 6. That then is the x-intercept. If you were to graph it at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the graph would go right through there. Okay? Um, you can play around with the graph more, but that's what would happen. Okay. Okay, I'm going to talk just a little bit more about this. <laughs> so let's be clear on this. This point here that's a nice big dot there, that is the point 6, 0, right? Now, in this equation, what's the y-intercept? Negative 3, right? 1, 2, 3. So that point right there. The coordinates for that point are 0, th oops, negative 3. Right? 0, negative 3. You know, and you can see, okay, the line's doing something, well, something like that. And then you could check the slope and draw a better line and get graph paper. But anyway, I wanted to point out what the coordinates were for both the x-intercept, that's the x-intercept, and the y-intercept. 